Hello everybody, welcome to Alan Wall's Photography. This is Alan and you are here for the uh, judging of the April Macro Photography Competition. This last month the uh, subject was crystals. In fact we spent the whole month talking about uh, making and photographing crystals like that one on my wall behind me on the television. And we're going to uh, judge all the entries that we got. And I say we, not because of the royal we, but because I am joined by a very special VIP guest judge today. This is Lauren Walls. Lauren, welcome. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Lauren is my uh, eldest daughter, and uh, she and my son were going to join us uh, today, but unfortunately, he got called back to work. Um, you'll remember that Lauren and Joseph helped me judge a competition about what three or four months ago. I can't remember what it was though. It was mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun, and we decided to do it again. It's like machine part. Oh, it was. It was. That's right. Gosh, we need to do another one like that. As always, I let you interpret the the subject any way you want, so long as we both recognized it as a crystal and macro. You were good. Good to go. Uh, we're going to give the honorable mentions in no particular order. I think that's right, isn't it, Lauren? And then go from 10 to the winner. That's mm -hmm. sound right? Yep. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Why not? We've got a lot to go through. So uh, the first picture is the uh, one of the honorable mentions, and it goes to my good friend Moshe Martin from uh, the, the Middle East. Moshe, well done. You got an honorable mention. This is a Tiberius Diamond Center, whatever the heck that is. Lauren, do you have any idea what a Tiberius Diamond Center is? It looks like a rock. Um, as an archaeologist, I feel like I should know. <laughs> we'll say I. what I love about this picture <laughs> is uh, that Moshe really captured the uh, variety of cleavage you can have in a crystal rock. Oh, there you go. All right. Start dirty talk right away from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it, a nice picture. It is a nice picture. It's a nice specimen, and uh, you know it, Moshe has uh, has worked so hard uh, uh, being part of this competition. I'm so excited that uh, uh, that he got his honourable mention today. The next image was from who's this uh, yeah. from, Lauren? Yeah, this one is Russ Richards. He's titled this photo, um, Another Sugar in Your Coffee. Yeah. And I love the color uh, and the shapes here. It's just, uh, it's a good one. I like it too. Um, it, there's, there's, uh, the, 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 the birefringence is what we're, a lot of the times, what we're photographing is what we're looking for is the odd way the light gets split up. This um, this looks almost like a, a wave plate would be needed to get this range of colors, but it's it's a nice technique and it it works. It's um, it's one of the relatively few straightforward, simple crystal pictures that um, uh, that made it into the the uh, the final group. But I like it. It's it's a good choice. Well done, Russ. It makes me want to see the yeah. It makes me want to see the. Um... The entire object, if it is an object, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that, uh, that's the it gets me. It gets me like well, zoom out. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, uh, and that is a problem with some of these crystals because they you you can only photograph a small piece of them because sometimes they'll grow to cover the whole plate. But anyway, this is nice. I like it. Like the colors and and the shapes myself. In at the well, no, sorry, no particular order. Another <laughs> honorable <laughs> mention. <laughs> goes to yeah she's done it again amy this is amy Furman, of course and uh, she's turned in a um, a stereo image that was a problem for me amy i can't resolve it is it cross-eyed or is it parallel but i still liked it and i gave uh i got my vote and as well as both of both you and joe like this one too lauren we did both like it i I particularly like the rich background color. So when I looked at it, I um, I was it was off putting to see the line down the center. And then my dad explained to me that that 
It's like a kind of like the magic eye pictures back in the nineties where there was something I needed to do to see it properly. So, but yeah, yeah. just from first, first blush. Uh, I really like the, I like the sharpness of it. I I feel like if I could resolve this uh, the way Amy intends it to be resolved, I, I would see this incredible depth because of the way she's photographed it. And I can get hints of it when I look at it cross-eyed. When I put my glasses on, though, uh, to, to view it as a parallel, I'm not getting the depth. So I, I'm not really sure. I'm just grabbing my glasses. Give it one more look. Uh, I, I, I absolutely agree with the other judges that this... Oh, hang on. It's 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 parallel. It Now I can resolve it now. Those... those does that require Just crossing the, your eyes? No, you can't do it uh, crossing your... There are two ways that you can do the picture uh, in this orientation or with them reversed. If they're reversed, you can cross your eyes and see the depth. If they're in this orientation, you have to use magic glasses, mm -hmm. magic spectacles to do it. Well, that, that looked great, Amy. I, I love it. Uh, the, you got the depth. Um, uh, yeah, perfect. Uh, so very nice. Great honorable mention. All right, moving on. Next in line, Jeff right. McDonald. I love this picture. Yeah, this is one of two that he did on this subject, isn't it? This is what, vitamin C, yeah? Beautiful. Yes, and ascorbic acid. That's what vitamin C is, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like yeah. I should know that. The first image that came to mind when I saw this was uh, like blowing dandelions in the wind. <laughs> and I think that... Uh, there's something special to be said for creating that with chemicals on a slide. It's pretty magical. There is something about this particular chemical of all of them that I think that those of us who, who dabble in these crystals will always come back to using vitamin C because it's so predictably interesting. The colors are always different and the way they form, I've ne I hadn't ever looked at them as those fluff balls, that's exactly what they look like. Yeah. And that's why they're so endearing. Uh, I, I don't know how he got the smoothness of the, the blue and purple part. That's also crystal. Um, I, mine look more like mountain ridges, the, the long pieces. So this is very interesting and very nice. It definitely has um, like a depth feel to it. It feels round and soft, like you could almost... Yeah. You know. And just like the round ones look like peaks or uh, look like, yeah, but that's the beauty of these things is they look three dimensional, but they're on a completely flat plate. We picked this one over another very similar picture uh, just because the other one was a bit busy, I think, a bit crowded. This is much yeah, nicer. Like yeah, we liked this one for the, um, the composition. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Good job. I like this one, Jeff. Okay, uh, coming in at, well, no, another. Complete. <laughs> Honorable mention. No particular un, order. No particular order. We have, this is one that my kids championed. Me and, especially. And it grew on me. You want to tell us what this is one? This one is, Lauren? Yes, this is Amy Perlmutter. Mm -hmm. She's called it Colorful Crystal 2. Um, and I love this. I would frame this and hang it in my house. I love the colors. I love the shapes. And that sounds so simple. But, uh, you know, as far as this gave me a feeling um, that I was looking at almost like a side scan sonar image. And, oh, wow. um, I don't know. There's yeah, there's a lot about this picture that I love. Well, I, I, love, I love it too for a lot of the same reasons. There's one thing that just bugs me about it, and, and that is it looks like it should be on its side. It, mm. I, I keep looking at it like with my head tilted um, because it feels like it, it should be strata rather than – but that's, that's, just, that's just me. Uh, so congratulations, Amy. Very nice. Everybody else agrees that uh, it should be vertical. So nice job. Nice piece of work. All right. Next up at, once again, in no particular order, 
this is uh what do you call this uh, what joe called yeah. it shark feathers didn't he yeah we called it shark feathers <laughs> um this is such a cool image i mean i just dad what do you think about it from a pho- uh, a photographer's perspective like as a lay person it's, I love it. They, I love it too. I, 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 th- I think that I, I, I took a couple of points off because it is a little soft in places, but these are hard things to, to photograph because they're often not really very sharp at the edges. They're actually micro crystals growing and they, they can be actually fuzzy. So, um, yeah, I, I, I like it, and it does look like shark's feathers. If they had feathers, that's what they'd look like. But uh, Yes, and we, we, forgot, we forgot to mention, this is uh, Rashed Al-Sumati. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And he, did, he submitted two photographs. One of them was actually at, um, I believe, 10. This is the 10 times magnification. Yeah, the other, the other one is 20. at 20. And yeah. the other one, the, the higher magnification, just produced a much smaller zoomed in image of one of these shark feathers as we're calling them. Yeah. Um, and the focus wasn't great. So out of the two, this one was definitely the superior image. I like the composition of this. It almost looks like a piece of jewelry, the way it hangs yes. down. Yes. Uh, it, it looks, it looks the way you would expect it to. So yeah, it's, it's a good composition, good color, plenty, uh, plenty sharp enough, I think. And uh, mm-hmm. good job. Good job, Rashad. Uh, another honorable mention goes to, oh, this is a, this was a very contentious one. (laughs) (laughs) We didn't agree on this, uh, though not by, not by much. I, I'll let, Mm. I'll let Lauren, this is one of those Easter egg aha pictures that we all love. I'm championing this one as one of my favorites of the whole competition, because when I opened it up and read the, uh, read the title. I actually laughed out loud. Um, it's by Paul Daly and it's called I'm free. And, um, this little man, just like (laughs) this little guy flying up from what looks to be like just a tumble, a tangle of sharp things. Um, I don't know. I love it. It's, it's ingenious. I think. Yeah. It, it raises the point of, you know, my, my, number one focus when I'm looking at people's photographs in a competition is interpreting the story that they're telling me. And, uh, you know, in, in many things, it's how you compose the photograph to tell the story. You show your subject in a particular way that gets the message across. You can't really do that with crystals. So in crystal photography, you have to take what you're given and then find the story through the way you compose the image on that slide. And he's done it perfectly. I mean, noticing that little fragment up at the top and making it the story with the title. I tell you, a lot of people kind of left the title on the table and and walked away from some certain points we had some of the most uncreative titles i've seen in a competition yet uh so uh, this is using the title and using the image and telling a story very good uh a very good shot paul well done paul yeah I like that one another one that i liked quite a lot is coming up here yeah this is crystal set yes by julie botts yeah my brother also really enjoyed the um, the polarity of the colors in this image. Um, I like the busyness of it. It feels frantic. Um, there's like this this origination point down in yeah. the center middle. Yeah. So I feel like the composition is good. I think as far as uh, uh, our view of it versus our dad's view, you know, dad said it was pretty busy. You know, and I guess you probably took a bunch of, sh- of shots to get this one. Um, and I just really enjoy it. I, it makes me feel something. Like, yeah, it's, it is yeah. busy for, for, for me. Uh, but, you know, it's one shot. I'm pretty sure it's one shot with a, a wave plate to get that mm-hmm. color shift. But it, it looks like flowers and fruit salad and, uh, <laughs> and insects and golf clubs and a lot of fish 
just it makes exploded. Me of Mardi Gras. It makes me think of like um, a headdress. Somebody yeah. would be Carmen like, Miranda's oh, hat. Right. Anyway, it was it was uh, overwhelmingly popular with my offspring, so that's good enough good for me. Julie. <laughs> Very nice. All right, so this is, I think, one of the most interesting images we looked at. I I loved this and immediately wanted to see it get an honorable mention. I don't know what it is, Robert. Um, uh, it's Robert Storost, of course, um, uh, who turned in this uh, called Badlands. I get what he's talking about with Badlands, you know, the, the mountains coming down into the valley and the uh, heat and all that. But it looks like a piece of fabric to me, a piece of Scottish uh, half-made tartan or something. Yeah, it's it's a. I think it's a lovely picture, and you've got the warmth and the softness of it. Um, I'm guessing it's ascorbic acid, um, the the way it's forming, but I don't know. It's pretty though. It, it definitely. I looked weird. at it when I was doing the reviews by myself uh, the first time. I went back to this a number of times, and also looked at it from different distances away. Um, so there's definitely something about the image that does yeah it does make you question what's going on here i like it with um with with abstract photography or with high magnification photography as you get higher and higher magnification the viewer has less and less uh perspective um from their life to know what they're looking at so mm -hmm. everything okay. becomes abstract at magnification and this is a good example. The, the closer in you get, the more detail, but the less sense it makes. Um, that explains why. I think that explains why I had so much fun looking at these. Oh, yeah. I, it, I hadn't thought about the, like, the theory of mind behind this type of magnification. In, in many respects, it's a blank slate that you get to make of it what you want. But some, some do it for you, and uh, uh, you'll see coming up. Some of these pictures are amazing. All right, so here's one that, that your imagination can run free with. Mm -hmm. This is Todd's, I think, isn't it, uh, Lauren? Yes, yep, Todd Becker. And he's done Epsom salts here. And what do you see? What, what appeals to you about that? So um, I love the softness of this. There's, I mean, all I'm getting wings. Uh, and my brother as well, um, said he would hang this on on a wall in his house and he said he what he loved the most about it was the um the colors the grays and the yellows um with that little touch of is that birefringence birefringence yep yeah, that's yeah, the, the um, color yeah so i i think uh todd todd did a pretty amazing job here with the composition because it feels like fluttering yeah. uh, wings, maybe wings that have fallen off or whatnot. Yeah. I love it. It, it for some reason makes me think of fairies that these are little fairies on, uh, on a, a, a bush or a, a plant. And I don't know what this axolotl is doing swimming by, but, <laughs> but I see fish in there too. I saw fish in almost all of these. I must've been hungry. Very nice, Todd. As always, you you surprised and delighted uh, your judges. Nice work. All right, I think this may be getting close to the end of the honourable mentions. This is a very interesting, with a, a very interesting picture with a slight problem. This is from Bob Fine. This is mm -hmm. pyrite begets pyrite. What do you think of it, Lauren? Um, I love the texture of the pyrite itself i want to know so i think the angle of that the photograph was taken at uh probably should provide a third dimension but it did make me question what am i looking at here i kind of want to reach into the picture and like sh I, dad explained to me that it's set on a mirror so that helped my brain to conceptualize what i was looking at but um yeah, mostly I just love the texture. I'm a rock person anyways, so it yeah. got me. I, I love the the gold um, uh, in minerals and uh, really in anything. This kind of shading of, of gold is a lovely color for me. I, I, it appeals to me. 
but I, like you, Lauren, am bothered by the perspective. I, it took me a while to, to realize what I was seeing, but I think um, I, I think if that edge, uh, one of the edges on the front were tilted just enough to see the face going back, I could have made more sense of it sooner. Um, but it, it's a successful picture. It's very creatively lit. It has a lot of character to it. Very nice. Good job, Bob. Now, am I right in thinking that's it? No, that's not it. There's a couple uh, one more honorable mention. Okay, then we should honorably mention it. Yes. This is a Martian ice cube, I think, <laughs> from, from Tangent. Turn this one in. Those of you who aren't aware of it, Larry Strunk is one half of the Tangent and Chamfer show. I'm the other half. Every yeah. once a month, we do a 3D modeling and, and makers uh, 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 live stream chat. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Next one is on the 25th of May. So now you know. Hey, Dad, take a note. That's the day before my birthday. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> I will tell. I'm not good at birthdays. I'll write that Any down. Reminders will be coming. So, what do you think about this? Um, okay. I'll say Larry submitted two photographs, uh, mm -hmm. both of optical calcite. And Personally, I preferred the other one. And um, once when I looked at this by myself, I didn't have a ton of feelings about it. But when I looked at it with my dad and my brother, um, they helped me to to v verbalize what I did like about it. And that's that's the the mystery of it. The like the feeling that there's something dark and foreboding in a piece of crystal. So so yeah. definitely. That's what I liked about it. Yeah, there's something that occurred to me later as I was looking at it that, that I think is is clever, and I, I think Larry probably did this on purpose. The way he's lit it, you could look at this as, uh, as if you're looking into an alley or the corner of a, uh, of a building uh, with instead of the, this being a big bulging rock that's coming out in your face, you're looking mm -hmm. into this dead end alley and that that crack then becomes a crack oh. in the wall and there's a person on the left climbing up another crack in the other wall and this is the corner and this is a drain or something like that. I, I, and you can flip it back and forth and make it a, 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 a 3D rock again, but I, I love it. It's full of, it's playful and sinister at the same time. Stephen yeah. King kind of picture. I like it. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Good honorable mention. All right. I think we are now. Yes, we are. We're getting ready to start actually giving numbers. Let's start with number 10. Another contentious picture. Yeah. Now, this is Garrett's... Um, How, did, how does get, yeah, Garrett's last name get pronounced, do you suppose? I suppose it's Slorink. He's called the photograph Krulin, which I believe it means curly. And I like this a lot. Um, it's very different from all the other submissions, which is, mm -hmm. that's something to be said. Well, we were talking before about whether or not this is a, a naturally occurring crystal structure right. like this, the and there are stranger shapes than this, or is this painted on uh, to to give that effect? And I don't know, uh, but um, yeah, I would, like to know. I would like to know. I'll I'll find out. Uh, yeah, Garrett, you can maybe tell me at the next live stream uh, if if you're there what what we're looking at here. I'd very much like to know what the chemicals are because I'd like to try to grow one of these. Um, it's, 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 it's a bit on the busy side for me and a bit on the, uh, um, bright side, but those are the exact things I liked about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's same with Joe. So I was yeah. definitely in the minority there, but, uh, yeah, very nice. Well done. 10th place. Congratulations. Yeah. I think that's the first time you've placed Garrett, uh, in the competition. So well done. Oh, yeah. Now, this is an interesting one. 
What is this? Epsom salts again, isn't it, Lauren? Uh huh. Apparently, from somebody who lives in Epsom. Then I think they should know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably better than anybody else. So, what, I, I remember Joe's reaction to seeing this was how strikingly three dimensional it is, and how it appears to have voids and and mm -hmm. and uh, you know be really a, a, a globe basically with with holes in it, uh, and it does that really well. But um, yeah, I I bought some Epsom salts yesterday after seeing this. Um, mm -hmm. I went to uh, the drugstore and uh, bought. You have to buy in two pound bags. And I bought a two pound bag of it. My crystals did not look anything like this. So So he's done something uh special to it. I think it's the solvent he used. I think he said alcohol, didn't he? Um yeah, I think it was Epsom salts and alcohol. I used okay. water and uh and acetone and it doesn't dissolve in acetone, but I didn't get these pictures. I'm guessing this is also shot through a wave plate, but I can't can't be sure. It is interesting, and Joe absolutely loved this one. Yeah, he did. What am I forgetting? There was something else that we said about it that uh, was a was I mean, a I, My comment was that it's so close to being perfectly round that my brain wants it to be a perfect circle, and so yeah. that was a little off putting for me. And then I just get very strong Lisa Frank vibes from this. I'm having oh. flashbacks of being a kid and the late eighties. Okay. But, but I think yeah. that's, what's cool about it. And that's definitely what my brother liked about it. Yeah. It, it, part, parts of it look like it's been spray painted on the side of a train. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's there's a word. Airbrush all... t-shirts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. T-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Tie dyed. Mm, totally different. But yep, yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not well known for my fashion understanding. <laughs> To put it mildly. Well, here's one that all three of us just were wowed by. And um, this is a composite. It's by Amy Furman. And uh, yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Two Amy's. Two Amy's. And I keep thinking um, we're talking the wrong one. Well, this is this one was composited and uh, it immediately grabbed me uh, as a very clever composition. What, what, do you think uh, you and uh, Joe saw in this predominantly, Lauren? So for me, um, I have been lowered down into at least two wells in my life um, and a couple of mine shafts. Um, and that's that's the, the vibe I got from this picture. It's amazing the way it mimics a stratified site and it appears to be looking up out of a tunnel um, with the star that she's put in here. And I just think it's such a creative way to use, to use this static image that she was able to get. I love it for that reason. And my brother um, said that he loves it because it reminds him um, of early video games. No, oh, yeah, he did say that. It, it looks to me like, uh, like you're saying an excavation that you're down in the ground uh, all of these things in the wall of the thing are just earth. It looks like soil with, with uh, these are just crystals, mind you, that are formed on a plate. But the sense that I'm looking up along the side of a, a trestle bridge mm -hmm. above to, to the sky is really, it's almost claustrophobic to look at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and I looked at this for a long time the other night. It just uh, pulled me in. So very successful photograph, Amy, a uh, very nice composition. You, you got us all three on that one. Good work. So we are up to number seven, I believe. Yeah. And number seven is, that's not tangent again, is it? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Larry Strunk with another piece of optical calcite. Now tell me, you said you liked the other one better. Uh, I mean, when yeah. you were looking at the I other mean, one, you yeah, meant yeah. this one. I love this one because Why? he's taken he's taken away the negative space at the edges, and that allows my mind's eye to see it. You know, for me, I see it as a 
protruding edge of a 3D object, but the warmth, I get a lot of warm feelings from it. Um, and so, like, so I get texture, I get color. Um, my brain doesn't automatically make a story like yours does, I don't think, but um, you saw a person, you I saw did. some stairs. Um, it, it, it's strong. It, I can't see it as a as a, a corner of a cube. Mm. Even when I try to look at it and see the corner of the cube, the way the light's falling, it looks to me like this is a courtyard that we're looking down into, and this is the far corner of it. And the, the light from a street lamp is hitting this wall over here. Uh, and uh, that there's a person, where is she? There, in a raincoat, walking across the the rainy surface of the street. It's what it, yeah, that's, a, I, I can't shake that, that uh, uh, depth that, that it yeah. gives. But that's the whole point of these photographs. He's taken a crystal and made it into a spy story for me. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. the red and the, and the, um, uh, the, the blue just works perfectly. Great, yeah. great photograph, very in that? inspired. All right. Let me see what is, oh, we've got a tie at number six, our only tie. Um, and uh, these are two photographs that I absolutely love. And this was one of my favorites of the competition. And I've had the, the benefit of also seeing a video uh, where this was um, uh, the, the substrate for the video. But that isn't being judged today, just the photograph is. And uh, what are we looking at? And who's it by? So this one is um, Philip Mortensen. Yep. Uh, it's just called Crystal One. And I did not know how difficult it was to create this 3D. Like, I, I've never made these photographs before. I've seen my dad do them from far away. Um, but when dad describes me how to how to create this stuff to make this image. It is pretty uh, amazing because <laughs> uh, you do get a real sense of this floating space with these 3D crystals. Oh, yeah. it's, it, it's, it is amazing how when you think that this is just a thin film of liquid that's been allowed yeah. to dry slow enough to crystallize, yet it gives this feeling like I, I see dancing white elephants um, okay. uh, holding holding flags and little blue men um, for some reason uh, mixed in there as well. There's a, a blue guy standing on top of this elephant with his tummy sticking out and uh, another okay. one over here. Yeah, so I just went wild looking at this because it's so there's so much detail uh, and it's it's so uh, pleasing to look at. The fact that some of the crystals are gray and some are white is actually an artifact. They are gray and, and white, but they look shaded and, and unshaded, further adding to the, the weird shifting perspective. Uh, and I, I love it. I think it's a very good photograph. Mm. It, and it comes down to, again, it's not, you can't mix up the chemicals in a certain way that's gonna give this look. You have to make the plate and then go hunting for the story. And I think he found it. That's very cool. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Very nice work. All right. Who was tied at six? So we have another kind of mystery photograph that we all love from Graham Carey. And he's called this crystal mining. And Joe especially uh, got excited about the the way this looks like mine shafts in a side scroller game. Obviously he's a big video gamer or gamer, whatever they call it. Um, and when I looked at it, I saw strands of hair or since my dad's been photographing bugs for so long, like uh, beetle legs is sort of what I saw. Um, I but saw yeah, licorice. I really love, really love this. I saw licorice with, Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like that black licorice sticks. Yeah. But w the closer you get, the more 
incredible detail like these two people standing here what are they doing there yeah i i don't know what i'm looking at i don't know what the the perspective is are these bulges coming out at us or are these valleys not sure but i couldn't stop looking at it uh, i've got to find out uh, uh, uh graham what what you've yeah. used here is that a skull there <laughs> and there and a cauliflower i think so probably it is yeah probably <laughs> and this looks like somebody barfing cheerios <laughs> oh yeah i could see that <laughs> yeah anyway might be the licorice that's a really cool image love it love it very inspired spaceship right there and a man in an ejector seat very good yep. <laughs> all right Graham Carey, uh, a very nice piece of work there. That was tied for number six. So we are yep. in the top five. And um, yeah, let's let's look at number five, shall we? Oh, this, yeah, yeah. The, the, this is know. one that um, I think there were more aha moments in this than looking at any of the other work that was done. And I had the advantage of talking to the artist about this uh, for a while yesterday. What did you see in this, Lauren? Who, who's it by, first of all? It's Pat, yeah, Patrick. Is, um, I don't. I hope I pronounce his last name right. This is Patrick Stahl. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Uh, and we translated the title of the photo as Footpath to Insanity, but it was originally in Latin. Um, and I love this photo. It It is so light but textured and it really feels like organic to me uh oh, yeah. dna like sort of vibe is what i'm getting from it um and i love the subtlety of the colors yeah i do too uh, i love this photograph um i i love pretty much everything Patrick does. I mean, he's he's got quite an eye. Uh, but this is an amphetamine crystal, uh, which which really gives uh, weight to the story that he's telling. But what I'm seeing when I look at this is the underside of a, a, a piece of turf that was torn up out of the ground. This is the mud underneath. This is the grass hanging over the edges. And there's this little boy walking along getting ready to walk right off the edge of this thing and he's on the footpath to insanity i don't know what these tunnels are wormholes maybe yeah i see wormholes i love this picture uh, i mean it it really tells a story and pat what patrick has done is used a title that brings it all together and kind of gives you the hints you need to see what he saw when he saw this this image it's very dark it's challenging to to make out a lot of the detail but i think incredibly effective good story yeah, i would want to see this um on a gallery wall like probably 20 by 20 feet i'd want yeah. it huge yeah i would too exactly right i couldn't agree more great photograph well done patrick good work yeah it was uh boy the the, the judging the top five w was hard for this well, it's always hard but this was uh this was tough number four i love this photograph too but again uh, i wasn't seeing uh the, i wasn't seeing the correct perspective uh the whole first day i think there i don't think there's a right or a wrong perspective then i think when you see when you when i tell you what i'm seeing you'll think no that's the wrong perspective <laughs> <laughs> possibly yeah the way that I see it now is that this is the edge of a metal or a silicone disc that's got a chip out of it or a melted place or a, an injury. That's what I see now. But yesterday when I was looking at it, we were looking from the underside and this is a, a shelf sticking out across the, oh. the top. And when I, I see, now it, see it like that, then, see it like that before. Yeah, so it look it looks more uh, you know, physically possible uh, the 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 way it's meant to be looked at, and I can see your reflection here in the 
the side of something. I don't know what that is. Maybe uh, the lab. Anyway, I, I love the I, I love the uh, I got Terminator vibes. Remember yeah. when he yes. felt the yeah. liquid uh, cock? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That I do. Yes, this is from uh, Ingolf Kuntz, by the way. I I, I yes. can't believe I forgot to mention the the artist. Ingolf is a a, a scientist, a metallurgist, and um, he he understands this stuff better than better than most. But well, and he said in the. He said in the title, in his title, that this silicone monocrystal is this is the material for semiconductors. What did he yeah. say? It, it is the, the yeah. Silicone is the substrate that semiconductors are built on. So all chips are made of this stuff. It's glass, a kind of glass. Very cool. I like the number, like the sort of almost digital read or like computer uh, chip uh, reflection. Yeah, that's exactly. I mean, what it's, it is. I, I like that a lot. I from a uh, from a photographic standpoint, what I love about uh, Ingolf's work is, while most people would go to extraordinary lengths to get rid of these specular uh, bright highlights, he makes them the central part of the photograph, and he just does it in a way that makes it a feature. Uh, he is a very exacting uh, photographer. In fact, the calendar on my wall uh, is, is, has got his pictures in it. Um, nice. Yeah, he's, he's a, a, a very, very fine photographer. So, uh, yeah, I love this picture. Very clever. We've got just three more. They're the three biggies in the third place. Bronze, medal, Dan Stanifer. This is Dan Stanifer's uh, frozen um, soap bubble. What do you think? You ever seen I, anything I like this? I've never seen a frozen soap bubble before. So dad says this is a uh, sort of a common subject in recent years. Uh, and I've never seen it before. So uh, it was immediately captivating. And I just want to touch it. <laughs> like I want to, I don't want to pop it, but I want to touch it. And I, I love the feathery sort of uh, look of the crystals and this this line in the foreground. I didn't notice that before, when I originally looked at it. I was more focused on the, the plane that the bubble's sitting on, but I like this line in the foreground. You're, it looks like cloud to me. Almost. For me, it looks like um, that's, that lower bubble is maybe below the water line or something. There's some movement happening. I, I like that. Oh yeah, it, it does give the sense of movement. It also looks like not a snow globe, um, a paperweight, one of those yeah. expensive glass paperweights with all the world inside it. Inside them, yeah. That's yeah, beautiful. I've seen a lot. This winter, I saw quite a bit of video that people were putting out of actually, sh and in fact, Dan, I think, showed one of his videos of this in action, and you can actually see the ice forming and it moves across the surface. It's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, you'll have to send me a link to that. I'm very interested. Yeah, it's nice. Good job, Dan. Well done. Third place, bronze medal. Now, somebody right. gets a silver medal here. Who could that be? Uh-oh, it's one of our usual suspects has done it again. Robert Storost, number two. Tell us what this is, Lauren. Um, okay, this one, he's called this Hang On. And I, I guess just from what I've learned in the last 20 minutes, this is probably ascorbic, ascorbic acid, vitamin I, C. I don't think it is. I think it's a, an amino acid. So I did not learn anything today. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I do know what I like about this. And it is, it's so, again, it's organic. It yeah. feels... It's funny. I mean, yeah, I don't even know what else to say because as I'm looking at it now, I'm seeing more and more that I love about it. It's hard to believe that this is just a crystal growing on a slide. Yeah. The colors are rich and complementary. They look good together. These crystals that form fuzzy like this are actually, if you look at them close, they're very finely defined needles, millions of them. And you can see them. They look like wow. feathers and needles combined. 
I oh, think look, there's the shark's teeth in them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is beautiful. It looks like autumn leaves in places and mm. uh, and then that ascorbic acid look at the center there. But to me, the overall picture was one of a a man being electrocuted when his head touches this thing up above him. And that's what he's hanging from. What? You don't see a man with, with going, ah. Like that. Oh, oh. Uh... Arms out, legs out. Yeah, and his hair on fire. That's what I see. <laughs> I love it. Strange place to be. Your brain must. <laughs> it, yeah, it's uh, not a not a safe place to go by yourself. <laughs> but this is one of the things that is uh, that runs through Robert's pictures. Um, ever since I've been looking at them, is he has a a, a sense of humor in his art that is second to none, very well developed. And uh, this is a humorous and, and delightful picture, well worthy of uh, the silver medal, which leaves us with only one picture left. And what could possibly have topped all of these? Only one thing. This is what Liebfrau Milch, which is a white German wine mixed with erythritol, which is an alcohol, and these are the crystals that formed. This is an entirely new crystal to me. This um, is stunning. So this is Todd Becker as well. I should should point out. What do, what do you see in this? And then then I'll dive in with my two cents worth. I mean, I I think of a of a dark dream, like a nightmare, but not a scary one. You know, I I see birds and I see cr like crows. That oh. it, it's it's it reminds me of M MC Escher in a way. Oh yeah, yeah, I see Escher. Yeah, um, there's a lot to love about this picture, and I mean, for what it is, as like the darkest image that got submitted, you know, that might say more about you and I than. <laughs> And Joe, and Joe, and Joe, yeah. <laughs> but it's I, really, yeah, it's creepy. I love it. I loved it too. It it, it looks sci-fi, um, but but it's also beautiful. The curves and the lines, lots of strong diagonals that kind of draw you in. The I I see these biologic shapes like beaks and wings and talons. It looks like a frenzied, um, uh, a raven fighting or something like that. And yes. the, almost you can get the sense of this is a tower rising up above. Uh, it, it's and, and, and these could be palmetto fronds uh, as well. There's so many things. And the more I looked, the more I saw. I couldn't tell if these little feathery parts were glimpses of sunlight showing through or, you know, what it was. But... I couldn't stop looking at it. And uh, yeah, I think it, it, Joe was affected by this one too. It's, it's, mm -hmm. th this is, we've been talking about the trends that I see in the various artists who submit to this competition and, and the, the, the strength that Todd shows uh, so, so many of his photographs is uh, this, this use of abstract uh, de detail and pattern to tell a story. He finds these corners of a photograph that are just screaming a story like this. Beautiful, beautiful. I've got to try to grow this stuff myself. Yeah, that's another one that I'd love to know what, uh, I'm, yeah, what the, yeah, I want you to grow it and then show me uh, how this happens because, it, yeah. Well, I'm glad to find out that there is actually something that you can use leap from Ilsh for that's good. <laughs> Because it certainly was never a, a, a passable drink. Um, uh, is that a is that a Riesling? It's a Riesling, yeah, and it's very sugary. And it was one of the one of the cheaper ones that we served in the restaurants I worked at. Yeah, but uh, well, actually, it was Blue Nun was the cheap one. That's the brand. That's probably uh, more information than you need. <laughs> well. What a great competition this was, and, and it was so much fun. Getting to judge this with my kids was 
uh, a real treat that, uh, yeah, you, you, you've just got to take my word for it. Uh, I, uh, I am, I'm so excited to see how, uh, how your, your criticism has, has developed and how much you see in these pictures. Uh, it's, it's really, it's really heartening. I'm, I'm sorry Joe couldn't be here, but I have told him we'll do this again and, and uh, make sure that he's available. But Lauren, thank you for your generous gift of your time and, uh, and, and your expertise. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, I think we made good choices all the way to the end. So uh, thank you for coming. Good time. Great. Thanks, we'll, we'll do it again. And congratulations to uh, our winners, uh, to uh, Robert and Dan, to Todd. Thank you, guys. I appreciate everybody who submitted a picture. It's because of you that this thing is still going 36 months after we started and uh, just getting better. This month, it is bugs. And I'm making it a bugs wild card. So really anything that you can relate to a bug in any way will be good with me, as long as it's macro and uh, your own work. Uh, two photos this, this month, as always. And uh, I will see you either on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, depending on when you're watching this. I guess <laughs> it won't make any sense because if you're watching it six months from now, I don't know when you'll see me. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Lauren, again once more. And I will uh, see you guys. Yeah, do you want to change, change to your face to say goodbye? Not really. Not really, because my, my nose is running. And I was afraid that if I change back to my face, I'd have to wipe my nose like this. And it's too. Allergies. Yeah. Oh, geez. They're, they're terrible down here. Thank you for that, Lauren. I, I, mm -hmm. I, normally, I just keep talking and am oblivious to that. But thank you, everybody, for coming. Have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.